Hello everyone, welcome to What If Issei Finds Out Is Reincarnation Truth and Left Ria's Peerage Part 4. Chapter 15. Newly Formed Love. Returning from their picnic date, both of them found Grafia and Serzich's were waiting for them, with Ladder finally managing to apologize for that incident that made her desolate, much to his joy. After that, all of them sat down with a servant bringing the tea and leaving them to have a chat in private. So why are you here sister? Lucy asked, but unlike her usual hollow voice, this one was full of emotion, making the silver-haired woman smile. I'm here to inform Issei that he is due to return home. He has missed school, and he still has obligations to Ria's as much as he hates it. Grafia answered her, making Lucy tense at the thought of Issei leaving her. But to her relief, Issei was planning on keeping his promise to her. Grafia Serzich's is there a possibility for Lucy to come and live at my place and go to Kuo Academy with me? That question made both adults widen their eyes. They didn't think that Issei and Lucy will become this close in such a short amount of time, and honestly, they were glad that they did. Because now they were certain that Lucy will be happy, and that was all that mattered to them. I see no problem in that, don't you Grafia? Serzich said turning to his wife who shook her head having a smile. None. You have our permission. Though I do wonder how Rias is going to react to this turn of events. She questioned with a mischievous smile that made Serzich's pale as he sensed a rise in Lucy's power at the mention of his sister name. That reminds me. I will need to have a little chat with her and that crow that murdered Ice in cold blood. Lucy spoke in a voice that promised certain death with an overly sweet smile on her face. That made Issei and Serzich's pray to everyone they knew, Lucy would kill Rias, but also to not destroy Japan in the process. Well Lucy, I think that Issei has that base covered. Now could you please lower your aura it's kind of scary. Serzich said quickly seeing something that he wouldn't want even his worst enemy to see. Lucy's eyes were glowing ominous dark blue at the rage she was feeling at the thought of Issei being a victim to not only that crow, but also Rias. Issei softly put his hand on her shoulder, and it was like someone pressed a switch, Lucy's rising aura quickly vanished as she felt her crush's soft hand making her realize that he was there, and that thought alone calmed her down. Seeing that Lucy calmed down by Issei's touch, Serzich's sighed in relief, he couldn't believe that he again dodged another nuclear explosion that would happen if Issei wasn't there. Thanking him in his head, Serzich's collected himself before going into detail about Lucy's coming to the human world. Now Lucy, while we allow you to do as you please, try and not antagonize Rias and her peerage too much, try to be as nice as possible to them. I know Rias can be a handful, but please for the sake of the country of Japan and their inhabitants, try not blow it up if you would. Serzich has told her hoping that Lucy will contain her rage when she sees his sister. Also Lucy, we will arrange for you to be in Issei's class, so the two of you could be together more. Grafia told them before gaining a sly smirk on her face. Though try and keep a mushy stuff to the minimum if you will. While in school at least. That made both Lucy and Issei go wide-eyed and have an atomic blush that made the adults start laughing hard at them. As all four of them contained themselves, Lucy and Issei with their blush and Grafia and Serzich's with their laughter, there was only one thing to figure out before concluding the talks. And that was, where Lucy will sleep. Though that was easily solved when Issei told them that she could stay in his home and that his parents always wanted a daughter. Making Lucy blush again while Grafia just smiled. Well, that was all we wanted to tell you. And now we will take our leave. Keep her safe Issei. Grafia told them as she created a magic circular to depart with Serzich's. Oh, one more thing Issei. I received word from the angels that some trouble may be on the horizon, so keep a lookout. If what I think is coming then that would be your chance to get promoted to middle class even sooner. Serzich's told them before teleporting away with Grafia, leaving the duo confused at what he meant by trouble. Turning to face each other, they both stood up before Lucy tackled him to the ground and kissing him hard on the lips, making his eyes going wide with shock and pleasure as he felt how soft her lips are. After a moment or two, Lucy lifted her head a little bit, showing him a smile that was so beautiful that he wondered if goddesses had this much beauty behind a smile, but Lucy's smile made him blush and his heart to stop for a moment. W where did that come from? Issei asked slowly still in shock at what Lucy did. Replying in a shy tone with her face red and having a smile, Lucy answered him. You did so much for me in two days than some people did in over ten years. I can't express how much happy I am to be here with you. You broke all of my shields and made me realize that for the first time in my life, I'm not going to be used as a tool. And you showed me how much you care for me, and even after that fight we had, you were still here for me. Showing me kindness and beauty that lies beyond this castle doors. So when you get to become high class, you can rely on me to be there by your side. And if you ever want to have me in your peerage, then I would be more than happy to accept your offer. As she said those words, it was Issei's turn to kiss her making her eyes wide before she relaxed and gave herself unconditionally to him. As they continued to make out Issei lick her soft lips with his tongue asking for entry. Lucy immediately led him as their tongues started a battle for dominance. 
feeling a little bit of his old pervertedness coming back, Issei softly lowered his arm down her back all the way to her ass, softly squeezing it making her moan in response. They continued to kiss until they felt the need for air. As their lips parted Issei put her head on his shoulder, whispering to her ears words that made her even happier. I would be honored to have you by my side Lucy. And when I get my pieces I will give you the pieces that truly represent you in every sense of it. I love you Issei. Lucy told him her head still on his shoulder, her face having atomic blush and her ears letting loose his steam from them. Making it painfully oblivious that she used a lot of her courage to confess to him. Hearing this Issei couldn't be happier, because in this short two days where he was by her side made him realize that he had fallen for her the moment he saw her. And the more time he spent with her, the more he wanted to have her closer to him and hold her tightly and securely in his arms, never wanting to let go of her. I love you too Lucy. Issei told her with a huge smile that made her cry out of happiness that she finally found someone to love her and for her to love back. Though that was also Issei's thought as he was able to find someone to love and be loved. But that both of them lifted themselves up and as soon as both of them were on their feet, Lucy grabbed his hand into her and intervened their fingers while putting her head on his shoulder while having a content smile. You know Ice that was my first kiss. Lucy said with a small blush as Issei smiled. Why do I have a feeling that won't be the only first I take? Issei said perversely that made Lucy's blush worsen at what he was implying. Let's go to sleep Lucy, we have a lot to do tomorrow. Okay. He softly asked her getting a tired nod as an answer. With that the two of them departed to Issei's room to get some rest before departing to the human world, where one pissed off red-haired heiress was waiting for her love interest to return to her. It was the morning of a new day as both Lucy and Issei prepared for Grafia to come and to take them to the human world. Though when Grafia arrived to take them to it, she was beyond happy at what she saw and heard. She immediately hugged both of them and wished them happiness and luck. Now that that's sorted, we will teleport to the orc building so, Issei expects to be questioned. Oh, and before I forget, your three friends that you introduced to me are also there. It looks like Ria's demanded that they come there always after school. Grafi informed them getting a low growl from Issei, but before he could continue to get angrier, Lucy tightened her squeeze on his hand, a little calming him a little bit as he remembered that he now had her beside him. Sister, when we get there. I trust there won't be a need to introduce myself in a way I don't like. Lucy asked as her eyes glowed for a fraction of a second, getting a mischief smile from her sibling. Maybe, maybe not, honestly hard to tell, but I won't stop you unless you go overboard. Grafia told her getting a nod as an answer. After she got a response from her sister, Grafia flared her power teleporting them to Orc. In Orc, Rias tried to get Chelsea to accept her offer of joining her peerage. She didn't want a repeat of what happened when she angered the Auburn girl. Last time she was knocked out not knowing what happened for a few hours, and it still made her wince every now and then. And why won't accept my offer? You can have everything. Rias demanded to know why she was refused time and time again. Sighing heavily, Chelsea stood up from her position on one of the couches that Murayama and Caddis were sitting on and walked in front of Rhea's desk and glared at her making Rhea's flinch from her position in the chair behind her desk. I thought I told you like a million times. I'm not interested in what you have to offer. I'm only here because of Issei, and if it wasn't for him all three of us would be on our way probably shopping or practicing by now. Chelsea told her in a cold voice. And what makes you think I would let you see my pawn if you don't accept my offer? Rias asked in a smug tone as she was not going to be declined this time. Delcy just smirked at her and told her in a sweet tone. Oh my, what am I going to do now? Hum I know I will just hang out with him at school, after school and when he is in training. Yeah, I think that's good. Girls, what do you say? Chelsea turned around to the kendo duo seeing them start laughing and winking at them to play along. Why yeah, oh what would we do now that we can't see a say more than 15 hours a day? How are we going to survive Caddis? Mireyama laughingly asked her best friend as she started having fake tears. Sob, 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 I don't know. Ah. Caddis fake cried as both Mireyama and Chelsea started rolling on the floor from laughing hard, making Rias furious. Turning away from the trio that was currently making fun of her. She saw that her peerage was doing what they did after their victory over Riser that being nothing. Hiba was relaxing while reading some novel and drinking tea, while Rainer and Kaneko were eating sweets and having a staring contest, while Akeno was giggling at Ria's, yet again failed attempt to recruit members. Though the laughing was cut a little short when all of them noticed a magic circle appearing in the middle of the room. Everyone stopped what they were doing and focused their attention on it. Seeing that it belonged to her clan, Ria's was smiling from ear to ear, eagerly awaiting for her love interest that she still hasn't given up on. Well Murayama and Caddis and a little bit of Chelsea were still at odds seeing it. But they were all surprised as from it emerged three people. Two were girls that looked a lot alike. Though they immediately identified Grafia, while another girl was mystery. Though the third person was none other than Issei Haidu. 
but what made all girls mad was seeing their love interest holding hands with a girl that was a mystery to all of them, except to Grafia and Issei. Ice, Issei, Haidu, Weakling, Pervert those were the shouts that he was greeted with making him sweat a little, while the girl that was holding his hand giggled a little bit at their outburst. I figured that you were popular with ladies, but this much, Yufif if I didn't know, looks like I have competition him. Lucy said as he put her head on his shoulder, making a lot of girls get angry at what she was doing. And who are you? And what do you think you are doing to my eyes? Rias asked as she flared her power making her baby blue eyes turn pink as her hair started to weigh in all direction and her aura to disintegrate papers and a small part of her desk. Issei just glared at Rias and her stupid attempt at being possessive over him, but before he could do anything Lucy tightened her hand into his and let him know that she would do the talking. Grafia for her part just went to make some tea for all of them since she knew what would happen. She just didn't want to witness what was about to happen. Ah, yes I thought you looked familiar from somewhere. Now I know, Yufif if you are that Serzich's little sister. Should have guessed, Issei dear didn't you say that she would be your soon ex-master? Lucy used in a mocking tone wanting to see Rhea's reaction, and boy was it priceless. Hearing the way this mystery girl talked about her and her brother made Rhea's beyond furious, but she was soon put in her place when Issei stood in between the two girls while releasing his aura, making them both a little stiff. Lucy, as much as I would enjoy for you to put her in her place that would need to wait. Why don't you introduce to other before you let hell lose? Issei softly spoke to her as he put a hand on her shoulder, making her relaxed. Nodding, she stepped to the side of Issei and properly introduced herself making all of them in shock even Issei. Hello, and sorry for that heiress of Gremory House. My name is Lucy Lucifuge Haidu, heiress of the House of Lucifuge. It a pleasure to meet you all. Lucy introduced herself with a smirk on her face, seeing that their reaction that was priceless again. All of them were in shock at what she told them. Though only one that was not in shock was Grafia, she was giggling at what her sister was doing. W what? Was all that they could ask at hearing her statement. It's like I said. My name is Lucy Lucifuge Haidu. Younger sister of Grafia Lucifuge now Gremory and lover of Issei Haidu. Rias couldn't believe what she just heard. Issei had a lover now. And it was none other than Grafia's sister, who she didn't know even existed. The trio, consisting of Mureyama, Cadis, and Chelsea were also in shock. They would never have imagined that Issei would find a lover. And that said lover would be so much beautiful. They all knew that they had lost this war. As the girl in front of them outmatched them in all aspects. Lucy was without a doubt as very beautiful, her figure and her porcelain white skin along with her curves gave them a clear message that they had no chance in hell or heaven at winning Issei's heart. Though they were surprised when Lucy saw their looks at her and gave them a wink before returning to stare at Rias who was now beyond furious. What do you mean Grafia's sister? I never heard about you. Rhea shouted at her feeling a strong urge to disintegrate the silver-haired girl in front of her. It's like I said. I'm her sister, and I would be grateful if you lower your tone before I make you do it little spoiled princess. Lucy said in a cold voice that made them all flinch a little. Why Rhea started to say but Grafia cut her short before Lucy will freeze her for good. What Lucy says is true. She is my little sister. And you don't know because until only yesterday, Lucy was almost unreachable to everyone that wasn't me, and after yesterday, is say. Though I would like to remind you Rias that Lucy is way beyond your level of power as she managed to fight and survive during the civil war, so I would watch what I say if I were you. Grafia instructed Rias, but to her luck, she didn't listen. I don't care what or who you are. Hands off my eyes or I will blow you away, you bucking slut Rias yelled, but little that she knew that she just released a demon that was sleeping deep inside of Lucy for a long time. Instead of getting furious, Lucy just started laughing hard holding her stomach at her insult. She is going to enjoy this, and now that Rhea's made the first move, she knew that Grafia won't get between them. Ha 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 now that's funny, I'm a slut because I'm with a man I love, and he loves me back. Ha 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 oh 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 this is going to be fun. Issei love, please don't stop us, I would rather not hurt you in the process. That goes to your three friends also. Lucy said as her eyes started shining dark blue making Grafia sigh and move to stand near Issei, with the trio moving close to Issei for their safety. Get behind me ladies and watch the show. Issei instructed the three girls as Grafia giggled softly at Issei comment. The show was about to begin and they weren't going to miss it. Lucy winked at them with a smile and turned back to Rias and her peerage smiling darkly. And you honestly intend to fight all of us? Rias asked in a mock tone as her peerage formed a defensive formation with Kiba and Kaneko in front, Rainer and Akeno got behind them protecting Rias. All of them flaring their power to the max in an attempt to scare her. Which had the opposite effect. Seeing their attempt to scare her, Lucy started laughing again at how weak they were. Ahaha, ha, really that is the best you can do? Oh, I'm going to enjoy ripping you apart Rias and that fallen angel Rainer for hurting Issei the way you did. 
Lucy told them in a voice that made all of them pale even Grafia as she only once heard it, and that was when Lucy annihilated entire battalions of high class and ultimate class devils when they killed their father. Grafia may be a devil, but that didn't stop her from praying for the survival of Japan. We are not scared of you. Rhea said in a complete confidence until she saw Lucy unleashing her power that made the whole building shake. You were saying, you whiny little bitch. Lucy asked in a sweet tone that was clear to everyone that there will be a lot of blood soon to clean up. Tiba, Kaneko attack her. Rhea's ordered quickly as both of her pieces charged at Lucy, only for her to vanish from the spot where she stood as Kiba brought his blade down on her. Everyone except Issei and Grafia was looking everywhere to see Lucy, but they found where she was moments later as they all heard Akeno scream as she was sent flying at the wooden doors that were on the other side of the room. Quickly reacting, Rainer formed a spear of light and threw it at Lucy, only for her to take a hold of it and break it in half. But before she could do anything to the fallen angel she wanted to hurt the most, she was forced to move as Kiba charged at her in full speed, only for her to again vanish and appear near Kaneko, sending a powerful kick to the side sending her through the wall. With two members out of the way, Lucy turned her attention to the troublesome knight that was getting on her last nerves. Quickly using her advantage and speed, Lucy appeared near Kiba, sending a powerful punch to his gut, making him spit a blob of blood and kneeling down having no strength to continue. Seeing that the only member of her peerage that was left was Rainer, Rhea started to sweat and shake a little in fear at the power Lucy had. She never thought that someone this strong existed. She thought that the four Mayus, Grafia and her cousin were the strongest she knew. She was greatly mistaken. As Lucy turned her attention to the last remaining opposition, she let a dark chuckle at what was left. She expected them to be at least as strong as Issei was without his booster gear, but she was mistaken. I thought this is going to be a challenge they are weak as shit. Lucy thought, but to everyone's surprise, Issei appeared just before Lucy could start demolishing the two girls that were left. Grabbing her hand, Issei spun Lucy around and kissed her on the lips, making her dark thought vanish in a flash. As she continued to enjoy the kiss moving her arms around his neck, Rias and Rainer were left speechless at what was happening, while Grafia and the trio of girls sighed in relief that Lucy didn't dismantle them piece by piece in the most painful way. The relief quickly changed in jealousy at the thought that she was making out with a guy they all liked loved. Seeing that Lucy was calmer, Issei slapped her ass hard, making the girls blush and Lucy to let him own at what he did. Now that you proved your point, I think it's time for us to leave. Don't you think? Issei asked her getting a shy nod of her head as a response. With a nod he turned to the trio and Grafia and with his eyes told them to follow him. But before he could leave Rias decided to speak. W wait, where do you think you are going ice? I would not allow you to be in that bitch's presence. Rias told him with authority that was short-lived as Issei let go of Lucy and stood in front of Rias with his booster gear at the ready. Welsh Dragon Balance Breaker. He softly said as the gear started to shine brightly and Drake's voice was heard. Welsh Dragon Balance Breaker Drake's voice roared. As soon as Drake roared, Issei was consumed in a bright red light that made everyone speechless except Lucy, who was one of the two people who fought him in it. She smiled softly seeing him in his red dragonic armor. Where Issei stood now was a red warrior clad from head to toe in armor plating that looked as strong as diamonds. The mere presence of the armor sent shivers of fear down Rhea's and Rainer's spine as they were now facing something well above their league. They were facing something that was a reincarnation of a being of pure domination. Issei seeing them all start to shake in fear, removed his helmet and lifted his armored arm as a red orb of energy started to generate in it. Rhea's Gremory this is your final warning, stop ordering me around, or I swear to god, satan, dragon god or any other god there is I will obliterate you without a second thought, I only fought Riser for the sole purpose of getting closer to being free and helping Grafia and bringing Lucy back. If it wasn't for that you would be getting bucked senseless by Riser, so thank Grafia and Lucy for me helping you. With that said Issei released his armor and took Lucy's hand much to her happiness and left with Chelsea, Murayama and Cadiz following him while Grafia waited for a moment before she turned around but not before telling Rias something that made her a crying mess. If I were you I would watch what you say. You were lucky that Issei was here to stop her because Lucy would have torn you apart piece by piece. You had your chance to get his love. But the moment he learned the truth you lost everything and he is now on highway to high class. And getting a strong peerage. With that said Grafia left to where Issei and Lucy were waiting for her. Chapter 16. Gathering Clouds. As soon as Grafia left the club room, Rias contacted her brother demanding to know about this Lucy girl being sisters with Grafia and that she was alive during the Civil War. Serzichas explained to Rias that Lucy wasn't someone to meddle with and asked why she wanted to know that. But the answer made him white as a ghost as he heard that Lucy attacked them and that she has beaten Kiba, Kaneko, and Akeno without any problem. Rias also explained that Lucy said she was now Lucifuge Haidu, making Serzich's sigh in relief at first, before he had a shocked face, as he heard that Lucy and Issei were together before laughing in happiness at that. 
Though that happiness was short-lived as Ria's was furious that the slut has taken her assay. Ria's reaction made Serzich's sigh before telling her that she was lucky, that most likely Issei was the one to stop Lucy before she could do more damage and for her to count herself lucky as he told her a short story of Lucy making Ria's pale as she heard that at one point in time, she was fighting her brother almost equally. Though she asked him if Lucy had something to do with the mission that her Issei was sent on and to her horror it was, that made her a crying mess, but before she could say or demand anything else, Serzich's cut the line and ended the call. As Rias was crying uncontrollably with Rainer hugging her and telling her that all will be right. Though while the orc was recuperating, Issei along with Grafia and the girls was in the Kuo Academy's principal office, getting the final things sorted so Lucy can start attending school. Then Alana Gremory was a beautiful woman as they can see. She looked like she was in her 30s, she has soft brown hair that went to her shoulder. Though she wore a Kuo principal outfit that Issei could clearly see that Venalana's huge rack was threatening to burst through the blouse. But before Lucy or any girl could say or do something to stop his perverted side to come through, a magic circle appeared near Grafia's ear, bringing all of their attention to her. As Grafia spoke to the person through the communication circle, they were surprised to hear Grafia starting to laugh. Finishing her call, she turned to them and smirked. Dear sister, looks like you did a really good number on Rias. Serzich has just called to let me know that Rias is furious and a crying mess. Grafia informed the group making them all laugh though Venalana gasped at that. I don't know what are you talking about sister. I only introduced myself before she stirred the pot too much. Lucy said as she adores a cat-like smirk clearly showing that she didn't give a buck about Rias and her feelings. That made all of them laugh before they felt a powerful aura starting to build up, turning around to the source of it. They saw Venalana glaring at them, though she had a sweet smile on her face, making the group gulp a little bit. Now, what was it that I heard about Rias being in a crying mess? Venalana spoke in a sweet tone that was anything but that. Issei stepped forward without fear, as his perverted look changed to a serious one, making the girls blink at the transformation that happened. It made them all take a step back as Issei let his aura out to show Venalana that he wasn't frightened by her. That alone caught her eyes as this young boy was brave enough to stand against her. Even though his was a lot smaller than hers, it still made her have some respect for him. As much as I want to tell you Mrs. Gremory, I would have to disappoint you on this one. Though, if you wish to know, why not ask your own children as I'm sure that both would tell you. Issei told her while looking her directly in her eyes not blinking or flinching when Venalana raised up the aura and pressure on him. You dare to say that. I'm the wife of the head of the house of Gremory do not trifle with me, she threatened making her word cold. Lucy seeing that there would be a fight if she doesn't do anything stepped forward also. If you wish to fight us, I'm more than willing to let loose and go all out. I'm sure that you know me all too well mother of Serzich's and Rias. Lucy told her as her eyes start to glow dark blue again. Then Alana was surprised when she finally took a good look at Lucy, she almost forgot how she looked. It was way too long since she saw her. Last time she saw Lucy Lucifuge was before the Civil War and that was when she was a small and innocent girl that loved playing around with Grafia and Serzich's. Though when the Civil War started, Venalana along with everyone in the Gremory household were shocked about the things that Lucy did on the battlefield. She may be a sweet and gentle girl when not fighting, but when push comes to shove, she was like a force of nature that wreaked chaos everywhere she went. She still remembered what Grafia told her about what happened to a battalion of high-class and ultimate-class devils that murdered their father. Though Grafia was barely subdued when she heard it. Lucy had not so much restrained as she utterly destroyed and dissembled all of them piece by piece from the pure rage that she held for them. Then Grafia's and Lucy's brother died on the last day of battle by Serzich's hands, it made Lucy desolate so much so that even Grafia had a hard time with her. Though looking at her now, it looked like she finally found her reason to live as she stood side by side with the Red Dragon Emperor. Though that didn't stop Venalana from getting her answers. If she had to fight Lucy and Issei then she would. Seeing that Venalana would fight them if necessary and that Lucy and Issei had each other's back and were ready to fight back. Grafia decided to tell her before a fight would ensue. Mother-in-law, I know that you are angry that something might happen to Rias, but you don't have to worry. Other than her pride nothing is amiss as Issei stopped Lucy before she could do anything to her. And are you certain in that Grafia? Venalana asked as she decreased her power at the mention that Rias was fine. It's simple, I was present when Lucy was insulted and attacked. As I said, if Issei wasn't there, we would have to glue Rias back together piece by piece. I tried to warn Rias that Lucy was someone that was way above her league, though she didn't listen, and Lucy had to show it, though she only made her peerage incapable of fighting. Grafia answered again, while others sighed in relief that the danger was gone. If that's the case, then I owe you both an apology. Venalana spoke as she knew she could trust Grafia. She saw her as a daughter, and if Grafia says that the two of them are innocent, then it was very possible. Though that begged another question. Though now that you mention it. 
Why didn't you, Red Dragon Emperor, stop Lucy and protect your master from her in the first place and only stepped up when she was about to attack her? Venelana asked wanting to know. But unlike Harry as wants to know an answer, Venelana clearly showed a more polite and smoothing approach, unlike the red-haired heiress. Since you ask nicely and not Harry as ask I will tell you. Though know this in advance, it was because Grafia and Lucy that I went to that party and saved Rias from Riser. Issei replied in a polite tone. As he said his story, though this time, Alsha decided to also speak letting them know that she was, along with Drag, were a contributing factor to Issei's win. Her voice was full of power, but also gentle as she told them that Issei was willing to sacrifice everything so he could get a shot of being a victor and that he would finally start the road to freedom. Hearing the explanation from the second strongest booster gear possessor made Lucy along with everyone get wide eyes as they looked at Issei who closed his eyes and have a pout on his face as Alsha laughs at his misfortune. Well there isn't any way to change Issei back from being a dragon devil hybrid. That was necessary for Issei to attain his balance breaker. It is unknown to everyone that for the chance to have that legendary move, you have to give Drag a part of your body. Though since Drag is reasonable and he is against taking anything extreme, like heart or anything, when the decision is made by the host he always asks for the left hand where the gear is. So don't worry Lucy Haidu, her Mureyama, Caddis and even you Chelsea. He will still be the same as say, though he would have a more dragon-like feeling, his aura will be stronger, as well as attract both allies and enemies. Speaking of enemies, Rias had attained a very very wrong enemy. Venelana Gremory, thank anyone you could think for Issei not killing her the moment he found about what happened. Elsha explained to them getting them to nod in understanding. Though that didn't stop Lucy from hugging him tightly while putting her head on his shoulder to let him know that she would be still by his side. Though, no one except Grafia heard what Elsha called Lucy and it made her happy. But the heavy sigh, Issei nodded his head at Elsha's words. What she just said was true. I did sacrifice my left arm so that I can beat him. Though I don't think that this will affect you all too much. I'm still the same as say. But I can't say for others. I'm surprised, but hearing the explanation from Alsha, it looks like you didn't have a choice in the matter. As you can only improve so much before you will just start standing in place. Lucy answered him honestly that made Issei smile before he turned his head to look at the girls behind him, seeing that all of them nodded in understanding. What Lucy told is right, even if you make your power rival any high class in your base form, you could only do so much, but when someone with a higher power comes along, you will be a sitting duck as he would destroy you. So if doing that secures the safety of others then it's all good. Grafia told him as she smiled at him. Mureyama, Cadiz and Chelsea just nodded to their words, also having a smile on their face as they knew why he did that. Thank you all. But now to the business. Mrs. Venelana, I hope that you understand my way and hope that there wouldn't be any hard feelings. Serzich has understood my words, and I hope you will also. Issei told her as he hoped to still be on good terms with the Gremories, since they could be a good ally to him. Yes I do, and I'm very sorry for what happened. You have my guarantee that you will have the House of Gremories back up when you get independent, and you are still welcome to come to our estate, as we see you as a child of ours, as much as Grafia is like a daughter to me and my husband. Then Alana told him which made him grateful as he bows before excusing himself and leaving with Grafia telling them that she would later come to tell them something important. As soon as they left, Grafia told Venelana about the danger that was stirring beyond the horizon and told her Serzich's plan to secure his promotion and to along the way stop a war that would be coming if her male Leviathan was to come to the rescue. Getting a nod from the Gremory matriarch, Grafia excused herself and left to go to Issei's home to let them know what was to come. Returning home, Issei introduced Lucy and the girls to his parents. The girls were speechless at the beauty of his parents who looked like they were in their forties having only a small amount of wrinkles on their faces. Issei's mom had brown hair that was similar to how Mureyama's had hers, and she was wearing a simple pink shirt with brown jeans, while Issei's father who also has brown hair, though it was similar like Issei's only shorter, he wore a white blouse with black paints, and from the looks of things he was reading himself to go to work. Though when Issei told them that Lucy will stay here with them and that she was his girlfriend, they were in so much shock that Issei's mom fainted. Which made Lucy and Chelsea giggle and Mureyama and Caddis to look stunned. As she returned to the land of consciousness she quickly collected herself before she introduced herself along with her husband. Nice to meet you all, my name is Suna Haidu and this is my husband Goru Haidu. It's pleasure to meet you girls. Please come in and make yourself at home. Suna told them as she gestured them to come in and take a sit. As all of them sat down in the living room with Suna going to the kitchen to make some drinks and snacks, Issei's father started to question Issei on how he meet the girls. Though Issei waited for his mom to return so he wouldn't need to tell the same thing twice. As Suna returned with drinks and snacks, she sat down next to Goru and listened to what Issei told them. Well Mureyama, Kadis and Chelsea are in my class. 
Mireama and Cadiz are kendo club captains while Chelsea is in cooking club, though she doesn't cook that much she just enjoys eating a hell of a lot of sweets. Issei said with a smirk as he saw Chelsea's face go red with embarrassment. But Lucy just transferred. We met when her school sent a few of their best hours in a student exchange program a few months ago. She liked it here so much that she fully transferred. Issei told them, though to the girls it was clear that he lied about Lucy as they knew that Issei's parents still didn't know about Supernatural. Nodding and understanding, Suna turned toward Lucy. Tell me Lucy from which country are you from exactly, Issei still didn't tell us your surname also. I'm from France, Marseille, a city on the Mediterranean Sea Mother, and Issei is a little forgetful as he always just tells the first name. But to fully and properly introduce myself. I'm Lucy Renault and I'm also a second year at Kuo Academy and as of today in Issei's class. Lucy answered as she sent Issei a small glare before she bowed to Suna earning a small giggle from the woman. The foreigner and from your name Chelsea I assume that you are also a foreigner, correct? Suna asked Chelsea which was answered with a nod from the auburn-haired girl. Correct, I'm Chelsea Dalton and I'm from England, Newcastle to be precise, Mrs. Haidu. Chelsea also introduces herself as she smiled a little. Well, it's pleasure to meet not one but two foreigner girls. You can just call me Suna. No need for formalities. That goes to you too also Murayama and Cadiz, okay. Suna told them getting a smile and nod from the girls. After the little chat, Issei excused himself as he took Lucy's hand and took her upstairs to show her where she would sleep. As they were away, someone knocks on the door, prompting Guru to open it. In front of the door was none other than Grafia, though instead of her usual maid outfit, she was wearing a black t-shirt with silver jeans and black boots. As she introduced herself as Lucy's sister, she took a seat near Murayama as she made a small conversation with Suna and Guru until Issei and Lucy returned from upstairs. After a minute both Issei and Lucy returned with the former having dark red face, while the latter having a huge smile on her face. Seeing their reaction Grafia just laughed knowing that Lucy was a mischief when she was in a mood, and with Issei with her she was always up for trouble. Hearing her sister's laugh, Lucy turned to her and smiled. Sister, glad you can come. Same, though now I have something to discuss with you in private if both Suna and Goru don't mind. Grafia told her as she turned to the Haidu head seeing him nod. Not at all, Issei why don't you show Grafia and the other girls your room. I have to go to work anyways and your mother is going to grocery store. Goru instructed as he excused himself before leaving for work. Be this way. Issei shyly told the as Lucy started laughing at him. Oh, this is going to be fun. She said to herself while Issei pouted and muttered jerk, which made her laugh harder. As they entered his room, Grafia and Lucy along with Chelsea started laughing while Murayama and Cadiz turned red and had steam at all of the XXX posters, magazines and videos he had all around his room. And you are trying to suppress your perverted side how? Murayama asked as she had steam coming from her ears as her anger rocketed along with Cadiz's. W wait you two before you punch my lights out. In my defense, I didn't enter my room for almost a month. And when I was in it I was unconscious and I was too focused on training to beat the chicken to get rid of the stuff. Issei quickly said as he saw that the kendo captains had started to roll up their sleeves, ready to beat the crap out of him. What he says is true Murayama and Cadiz. We train him so hard that when he finished his training in the real world he would just pass out and we will train him inside of his booster gear. Though I think Drake said something about you still being a hatchling ice steer. Elsha spoke stopping the girls from going ape on him as they thought about it for the moment. But Lissay was furious at what Elsha said. I'm a hatchling. Oh, when I get there I'm going to kick that old lizard's ass so hard. Issei told with eyes full of anger. Ha 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 ha, oh, oh ice love, don't worry, I will clean the room up later, though I think sister had something to discuss with us. Lucy reassures him with a sweet smile on her face that turned into a mischievous one, as she was sure as hell she would tease him as much as she can. Which made Issei turn pale as he saw that smile, knowing that Lucy will make his life a living hell for all the porn he had. Now Lucy before you make his life hell, please listen carefully to what I have to say. Grafia told them as they took their seat everywhere they could. Good, now Lucy, Issei what I tell you stays hidden, no one knows about this except the higher ups in the three factions. We have been informed about two three days ago that some holy swords were stolen and it is suspected that the culprit was one of the fallen angels cadre class. For those that don't know the cadre class is like a Mayu and Seraphim and others. Meaning they are a leader class, though the culprit is unknown, we got a message from the leader of the fallen, Azazel, who told us that there were some of his subordinates that were not happy with the peace and that they were willing to start a new war. What I and Serzichas want from the two of you is the following, when the culprit is found, we want you to delay him as much as possible if you can't beat him, as someone of the Maus or maybe Seraphim will come to your aid, as we are sure that whoever it would be is extremely powerful, since they most surely survived the Great War. And don't worry, all party leaders agreed that it's better for the higher up to show up and stop it than to let you guy get killed and makes it a war of vengeance. 
Grafia spoke in a voice that was dry making them know that she was very very serious about this. Nodding in acceptance, Grafia stood up and left via magic, leaving the group there in silence. As the silence grew, both Lucy and Issei were in their thoughts as they knew that something big was coming, though how big was the question. After a few more moments, Lucy snapped back to out of her thoughts as she nudged Issei a little bringing him back. Looking at her he saw her big smile. Yes Lucy? He questioned. Love, why don't you go and buy us something to drink while I and the girls discuss something and clean up your room from this mess? She said in a sweet tone that made him sweat a little seeing an undertone to it. Nodding, he left the room going to do what she asked of him. As he was out of the house, Lucy turned to the other girls and smiled again making them go white. Don't worry I will not harm you, I'm not like that red-haired bitch who is spoiled so much that she thinks that whatever she wants she gets. So calm down, all I want to talk with you is about ice. Lucy calmly told them as they relaxed a little. Oh okay, what about him Lucy? Mireyama asked still frightened of her as she had seen what the silver hair girl is capable of doing. As I said I will not harm you in any way, shape or form, so stop being so stiff. I can tell the moment I arrived here in the human world that you three were glad and happy that he returned, but when you saw us holding hands you were completely jealous. Lucy said making the girls go wide eyes at how easily she read them. H how Kata said as she was shocked at Lucy's words. Ufufuf, don't worry I won't hold it against you if you try to win his heart. He is a dragon and dragons are known to have harems, so I understand that there would be a lot of girls that would go after him. Though warning and remember this well. If you hurt him in any shape or form, I will rip you apart and then use evil pieces to revive you only to do it all over again. Is that understood? I will do whatever is necessary to protect the one that for the first time in my life, outside my family, showed me kindness and love. So if you plan on using him you better walk away now and I will make sure to forget it like it never happened. But if you plan to use him and play with his emotions like those two bitches, then be prepared to die in a most painfully slow death you can't even imagine. Lucy started in a sweet tone with a smile, before her tone and smile changed to show them that she was dead serious of torturing them until the end of days, in a most gruesome way possible for hurting the one that managed to conquer and win her heart and love. Nodding furiously, Mireyama, Cadiz and Chelsea, swore that they will never hurt Issei in any shape or form, making the heiress of the Lucifuge smile in happiness. Lucy quickly hugged all of them making them surprised at her gesture. You have my blessing to pursue him and I will help you in any way I can. But you have to tell me now honestly, do you want to be with him? Lucy asked them as she wanted to know their feelings towards the one she held up the most in her heart. Yes. They answered honestly and with passion. Smiling again, Lucy told them to tell her their true feelings for the boy as they did. Girls started telling Lucy their feelings for the boy that they all loved. Though while they were talking, they started cleaning his room that was filled with porn and making it more like a normal room than a buckroom. As Issei was going to buy something to drink, but he was lost in thought about what Grafia told them. It sounded like they will be fighting for their lives and that didn't sit well with him. He knew that shit is going to go down the drain quickly and furiously and that there was a chance that those that he held dearly in his heart would get hurt or worse dead. As he was walking he bumped into someone making both fall down on their asses. Hearing a soft off that alerted him that it was a girl that he collided. Issei quickly looked in the direction that the voice was coming from, Issei saw that the girl he collided was a teen girl his age that had green hair that was tied up into two ponytails with brown eyes, she was wearing a white robe that covered her whole body with a hood, though when they collided her hood had fallen, letting Issei saw her face, which made him blush a little at her cute face. Though he quickly reminded himself that he now had a girl he loved. So he just stood up and offered the girl on the floor a hand. Uh, sorry about that, I wasn't paying attention where I was going. Issei told her as the girl looked up seeing his face and the extended arm to her. Why yes yeah, sorry about that also, the same can be said for me. She answered him in a shy voice as she took his hand and helped herself up. Though as soon as the contact between them was made it gave both of them an instant feeling of knowing that they are from different factions that were still hostile to each other. Though while the girl quickly started to go for her sword, Issei stopped her before the fight could start with a simple raise of his hand shaking his head. You don't have to do that. Honestly, I don't have anything against the angels and church so you can stop. I don't want to fight you, and especially here where there are a lot of people. Though what are you doing here? Kuo is devil's territory you know. Issei quietly told her since he knew that a member of the church here would spell trouble. Why would I tell you, devil? The girl asked as she took a fighting stance still not getting Issei's words. I thought I told you I don't want to fight. Anyways, I'm off I need to buy something to drink for my girl and friends. See ya. Issei said as he casually started walking again only to be stopped with her words. W wait. Can you help me, I know it's bad to ask you for your help, but I need it. I have two more comrades. One of them said she was going to visit her childhood friend. I think his name was Issei something I can't remember. The green hair said as Issei turned around to face her. 
Hey, do you have a picture or anything that will help you find him or anything of that sort? Issei said as the girl nodded and gave him a picture with an address written on it. Yes, my friend has gave me this and told me that they would meet me there. I had hour delayed flight so they got here before me. The girl told him. W wait a second this is my home and my address Issei exclaimed in shock as he saw his house and on the back of the photo his address. Why really? So you are Issei Haidu? Greenette said as she looked at him with wide eyes. Yes I am, though if your friends are at my house that would be very very bad. Let's move quickly. Follow me. Issei told her as both took it started sprinting at the direction of Issei's house with a girl behind him. Okay so you know me. But I never heard your name. Issei said as the girl was easily following his speed. My name is Cassie Lockhart. But others know me as Godspeed. Cassie introduced herself to him as they closed in on his home, only to feel both holy and devil power rising. Chapter 17. An old friend, helping hard to say, sped up a little more quickly entering his home with Cassie behind him, only to see that Lucy was glaring at the blue hair girl, as both of them were releasing a ton of power. While the blue hair was wielding a holy sword that Issei could easily tell from the feeling he got from it. Though to his luck, his mother was still away shopping for supplies, so she didn't see anything she shouldn't. Oh I, what the buck is going on here? Lucy and you blue girl lower your aura and stand down. Don't make me use force Issei shouted as he quickly stood between them shocking both girls. You, you are also a devil. Irina, I told you we shouldn't come here. The blue haired girl said to the chestnut haired girl with violet eyes and wearing the same with robes with a hood, but with it also being down showing her face that was in a pout, while still looking at the duo in front of her with her sword at the ready to attack. Though when the chestnut girl saw Issei she couldn't believe her luck and her happiness skyrocket through the roof at seeing her old friend. I say, it that you? Irina asked as she ran and hugged Issei hard making both Lucy and the blue haired girl blink in confusion. Love, you know this girl? Lucy asked still blinking as she lowered her power. I honestly don't know. Who are you? Issei asked the girl that was hugging him. Always say it's me, Irina remember. Irina said but to her shock, Issei just shook his head. Doesn't ring a bell. He honestly said. Balmini, do you remember the boy named Rin? Irina asked again. That made Issei eyes widen as he remembered his childhood friend. W wait you are Rin. I I Issei just couldn't finish before Lucy along with Kendo duo started laughing hard at him. Oh, my say, there isn't never a dull moment with you haha Mureyama laughed as she bent a little from it holding Lucy's arm not to fall down. Well Caddis was on the ground with Chelsea just shaking her head with a giggle. Cassie was looking at the scene along with the blue haired girl in shock. She never knew that the boy Arena blabbed about was now a devil and from the look of him a powerful one at that. So this is your childhood friend Arena. I never thought that you would be a friend of a devil. The blue haired girl said making Arena release her hug as she faced her. You know Zenovia, I didn't know that he became one. Irina answered as she turns towards Issei. On that thought, how did you become a devil ice? I know that you are not religious. Irina asked, but Issei just sighed deciding that he would answer her later. That is a long story that I do not wish to speak now at least. Though I have a question, what are you three doing here? I know that you are exorcists, but why are you here is the main question. He said as he looked at the three girls. And how do you know that we are exorcists? Zenovia asked as she narrowed her eyes at him. I have my ways. Though I think you will find out soon. So back to my question. Issei answered simply while looking at the blue exorcist with a bored look. You know love, they are probably what heaven sent to help in the upcoming fight. Though why send you three when I know for sure that heaven has some high level angels ready to fight. Lucy spoke to them all as she put her head on Issei's shoulder, making Irina a little jealous. Though you all didn't tell us your name and what are you doing here in Issei's house. Irina spoke as she managed to regain control of her emotions. Oh, that's easy. I from now on live here, will the other girls come here on Issei's request. As for names, I will start. My name is Lucy Lucifuge a high class devil and Issei's lover and girlfriend. Lucy said as she bowed a little. Making Arena have wide eyes as she heard that. But before she could say anything Chelsea beat her to it. My name is Chelsea Dalton, a human with a sacred gear. Nice meeting you all. Chelsea said as she got closer to Issei and Lucy. Our names are Murayami Yamazaki and Kadisato. Both said as they also got close to them. I think it's our turn then. My name is Cassie Lockhart Aka Godspeed. Cassie told the as she bowed a little. My name is Zenovia Korda. Zenovia shortly answered still not pleased. And I'm Irina Shidu. Ice childhood friend. Irina happily told them with a huge smile. Though Lucy could clearly tell that Irina was jealous of Issei being with her. As the greetings were concluded, Issei decided to see why they were here, which unsurprisingly was because of the holy swords that were stolen. In the meantime Issei's parents returned and were pleasantly surprised to see Irina again. After talking some more, Irina and her group took their leave telling the others that they would see and talk to them later. 
seeing as it was late Mirayama, Cadiz and Chelsea, also told their goodbyes as they departed to their homes leaving Issei and Lucy to their devices, as they both eat dinner with former's parents where Lucy was telling them a little about herself before going to sleep with Issei. As Issei was getting ready for sleep, he heard his door opening. Not giving it much thought as he knew that it was Lucy, he didn't see her coming behind him and softly putting her hands around his neck with her lips millimeters away from his ear. Honey dot Lucy whispered hotly in his ear as her hot breath sent shivers of pleasure down his spine as his horny side was starting to overrun him. Seeing her love shivering just from her voice and her words, Lucy decided to mess with Issei a little bit more. Why yes. Issei said as he gulped down hard. What do you say of us having some bedtime fun? Lucy whispered again as she lightly bit his ear making him go dark red with a nosebleed. I I I Issei wanted to say it but couldn't as Lucy stopped his brain from working as she was in her mischief mode that Issei was about to learn is deadly to him. Yes love, you want what? She told his as she bit his ear again and gave it a light lick, sending more pleasure down his spine as Issei's twin was rock hard from her work and his nosebleed worsen. I I he again started to say but Lucy again beat him to the paunch. You want to ravage me? To make me the slutty girl that is craving for you semen right? Lucy said as she moved her hand away from his neck and started running it down his torso all the way softly scratching him making Issei's condition even worse. Don't you want to use that little dragon of yours to make me finally fully yours hun dot? Living up on his very little self-control that he had. Issei's mind turned to that of the beast wanting to take her down and buck her senseless. Why yes. He answered in a groan as Lucy's hand reached his boxers where his twin was covered. Softly running her hand through his boxers feeling his rock-hard stick, Lucy licked her lips a little loudly making Issei almost lose total control. You know love, I would like very much for you to buck me senseless and to make me yours fully, Lucy told him as she bit his neck this time smiling at how much she was making Issei fight his control, trying not to violate her. Though what she told him was what she really wanted for him to do. To make her completely his, not that she didn't give herself to him already. But she wanted it to be in all aspects of love. L Lucy, yo you don't know how much I would like to do all of that. Issei said between moans as Lucy was still running her hand through his boxers massaging his member, giving him pleasure that he didn't know was possible. I know love I would also love for you to pin me down and do all the stuff you want with me, Lucy answered in a soft slutty voice, as she turned to say to see her making him almost coon from her slutty voice, her actions, and her looks. Lucy was in her underwear with a bra loosely tied to her body, giving him an almost perfect look at her tits, as her right nipple showing a little where her underpants were at an angle, making her even hexier if possible in Issei's mind. Issei couldn't keep it up, as the amount of blood lose from his nose made him pass out from Lucy's looks and words. Looking at Issei's passed out form, Lucy just giggled as she was secretly glad that he managed to keep himself together for as much as he could. Putting him in bed, Lucy fixed her bra and underpants and laid down next to her passed out boyfriend and cuddled next to him as she fell asleep with a huge smile. After that little teasing show, it was morning as both lovers were still in their sleep with Lucy holding Issei tightly with no intention of letting him go. As the first sun rays hit them it was Lucy that was the first one to wake up. Opening her eyes, she saw that the love of her life was still sleeping peacefully as his head was between her breasts, making her giggle a little as she remembered last night and the thing she did to him. Though as she wasn't as sleepy head as him, she untangled herself and started putting her cloths on with her back to him, though she was soon red with steam coming out of her ears as she heard Issei's voice. Now, this is what I call a sight for sore eyes. He said with a yawn as he saw Lucy bending down to put on her school uniform, giving him a perfect view. I'm more than happy to show you this every morning love. Lucy said her voice slutty, and her movements become a little bit erotic, giving Issei a show with her face still red from his words. Grinning a little, Issei moved a little closer to her before grabbing her waist and pulling her back to bed, which turned him a eep from the silver hair girl. Pinning her down, Issei looked at her dark red face and dark blue eyes that held only love for him. Leaning down, Issei captured her lips with his softly before Lucy, who was melting in his kiss, started to be more aggressive as she brought her hand around his neck with her legs encircling his hips, locking him in place as she hungrily started kissing him. After another session of passionate kissing, both put on their clothes and went to breakfast and headed to school. Along the way they were joined by other three girls. With their little group joined together, they made their way towards the gates of the school, not knowing what clusterbrick was about to happen. As soon as they went through the gates, all eyes of the students present there went to them. Though when they saw Issei holding hands with a beautiful silver-haired girl, their eyes widened as some girls were whispering furiously about the girl that was holding hand with one of the most perverted boys in the school, while guys sent death glares at him. Lucy seeing this gained a mischievous grin as she stopped suddenly making Issei almost fall to his butt at the stop of the moment, though when he turned his head to see why she stopped his eyes widened as she kissed him on the lips, making other students have an unbelievable face at seeing this. 
but before anything could happen, Murayama took both of them and started pulling them to class before the chaos could begin. When Issei entered his class, he was bombarded with question after question about the girl that kissed him, but before he could answer the teacher entered the room and made an announcement. Settle down everyone, now before we begin, we have a new student joining us. Please come in and introduce yourself to your new class. As soon as the teacher said those words the door opened to reveal a girl that had long silver hair with purple tone to it and dark blue eyes that as soon as they saw Issei shined in excitement and mischief. The simple look made Issei gulp a little hoping she didn't do anything too bad. Writing her name on the chalkboard, she turned to class and introduced herself. Hello, I'm Lucy Renault and I'm from France. She told the class in an elegant voice with a perfect bow that made boys and girls blush at a regal behavior and beauty. Wow, she is perfect 8357 85. Mitsuda shouted to the class earning himself a chop on the head from Issei and a giggle from Lucy. If I were you I would shut up. Issei said in a cold voice that made the class stunned. But before the teacher could react Lucy dropped the bomb that made whole class shock. Now love, I thought I told you not to blow up that easily. Lucy spoke to Issei earning a blush from him as the whole class looked at him in shock. Bell love. They all shouted as they saw Issei duck down to evade two punches to the face from the perverts who were furious at him while Lucy just giggled again. Yes we are together. You all see me kiss him before school and before you ask her say something, no he didn't blackmail me or anything like that, if anything he helped me return to my senses and I'm eternally grateful to him. Lucy told the class as their eyes widened. Before the fight could happen between Issei and the boys, the teacher stopped it with a cough and told Lucy to take a seat near Issei, much to her joy. As the teacher went on with his lesson, Issei started to doze off earning him a light shake from Lucy which woke him up. The teacher seeing Issei shaking his head decided to call on him. Ah Issei since you love this topic so much, during what invasion was the German forces pushed back into Poland? The teacher asked getting a silent groan from Issei. Looking down for a second, he saw the information and answered respectfully. Operation Bagration, which was launched from Belarus by Soviet armed forces also known as the Red Army. The Operation Bagration ended when Red Army was near the outskirts of Warsaw. Issei replied to the teacher. The teacher smiled brightly nodding his head. Correct Issei now he was interrupted by the speaker for the announcement system coming alive. A moment later a female voice came over the speaker system. Uma Mano, Issei Haidu, Lucy Renault, Chelsea Dalton, Murayama Yamazaki, and Kat Isato. Please report to the Occult Research Club meeting room immediately. Thank you. The announcer said as the teacher sighed. Go on kids. The rest is homework for you all, which is reading pages 115-125 and complete the worksheet I gave you at the beginning of class the teacher said as the six students left the room towards the orc. Anyone have any idea about why all of us were called? I get a say, Lucy and Rainer, but us three. Caddis asked as they were making their way towards the club room. Probably the princess wanting to have all of us there, since Ona Citri, the student council president told her about three exorcists wanting to talk to her, and before Issei says anything, we met her this morning during our morning meeting that he doesn't attend. Rainer answered getting all of their eyes go wide with shock. Sona is a devil. All of them thought as they saw the girl plenty of times but never bothered to check. As they entered the orc, they saw Rias and her group along with none other than Sona with a student council on one side and the three girls on the other. Issei sighed heavily as he and his group entered. So this is the Red Dragon Emperor and the Lucifugere. The girl with short black hair emotionless said as she pushed her glasses up her nose a little. Yes, we are what you say heir to the Citri house. Lucy said in equal tone as both she and Issei bowed a little. I'm sure that you by now you have heard of me, though we could discuss that later. Now back to the topic, now that Rhea's group is here along with the people you wanted what is that you wanted to say. Sona told the three exorcists as Zenovia took the lead in their conversation. What we want, no what we demand is for you to not get in our way of hunting down those thieves who stole our artifacts. She demanded as she took a hold of what they could tell was a holy sword. Now now, Zenovia we told you to be civil, how can you demand from them something like that when you are hostile? Cassie spoke softly as she stood up and bowed. What my friend tried to say is that we would be grateful if we don't have to worry about you devils joining the ones that stole our weapons, in exchange we will tell you who stole it, is it agreeable? And that is reasonable, you have my guarantee that the devils will not intervene in the church's business. Issei spoke before any one of the heirs could tell anything shocking both Rias and Sona. Ice, what are you doing? Who gave you the permission to agree to something? You are my pawn behave, Rias yelled as she was at rage at what her piece said. Though before Sona could also said something Lucy decided to remind them why she was feared. Now little Winnie bitch, what did I told you about rising your voice at my love? Lucy sternly spoke flexing her power to tell her no that she continue what she started and wouldn't stop this time. That made everyone stiffen as they felt her washing over them as they wanted to be everywhere else except here. Thought while Rias and her peerage were shaking in fear. 
Selna and her peerage along with the church members, drew their weapons and magic at the ready. Though they were shocked when Issei just kissed her cheek softly gripping her ass making her power dissipate and making her stiffen a moan that was threatening to escape as Issei from the looks of thing, found one of her sensitive spots. Behave. Issei sternly scolded her as she just nodded her head with a pout but soon was relaxed with a dark red face and steam coming from her ears as Issei patted her head softly. Excellent, I was waiting for something to spark tension. Kiba suddenly told them as he drew his sword and pointed it at Zenobia, having an emotionless face with eyes that showed pure fury. Shit what's wrong with him? Issei thought as he saw Kiba attacking Zenobia who was saved by Cassie blocking his sword with her hand striped swords. Crap. As Cassie blocked Kiba's attack Zenobia unwrapped her blade, but as she was about to attack and strike Kiba who was still locking blades with Cassie, Chelsea appeared behind Kiba and with a quick chop to the neck, knocked him out cold, which prevented even more disaster that would surely happen if Kiba went on a rampage. Sighing in relief, Issei thanked her for her work, making the girl blush at his word, before he turned towards Ria's with a cold glare that made her shiver. You were saying something Ria's. Looks like nobody in this peerage of yours needs permission, as your own knight attacked an unarmed opponent who comes in peace. Some king you are. His cold words were something that even Sona couldn't expect as she saw his two battles with Riser, and she thought that he was devoted to her. Looks like she was very much wrong in her opinion about him. And you know that you could get punished for your words, correct? Sona said completely ignoring the exorcists that were in the club room. And who is going to punish me, hmm? Issei answered as his eyes turned a little bit green as his anger rose. Though just as he said that he saw her whole peerage stand in front of her ready to fight. Watch what you say hi do, you don't want us as your enemies. A girl with long black hair stated. Her hair was long enough that it went to her knees said as she pushed her glasses up a little with a weapon that appeared in her hand. If you fif fif, now those are some big words coming from worms, don't you think sister of Leviathan? Lucy asked as she stood in front of Issei with a dark smirk as her fingers started to electrify with high voltage. This isn't about you air of Lucifuge, Issei Haidu, the pawn of a high-class devil is overstepping his boundaries. Don't you think that also, you are a high-class devil after all? Sona said as she again pushed her glasses up her nose. And yes you are right, I am indeed a high class. Lucy said in a calm voice, but before Sona could say anything Lucy beat her to it. But that also doesn't include me not defending my love as he is right to say what he wants. He is right about her, not having any authority or power for her peerage to follow her aid by example or by will. So you can understand why I'm on his side, as he has both power and will, also he doesn't force people to follow him, they follow him because he sets himself as an example and has the courage to do impossible. Hearing those words Issei blushed hard as he could clearly see with what passion Lucy said about him. Though while everyone else also heard her words, some were fuming while others in awe at what the silver hair beauty said. She made it clear that she would stick with him until the very end. That may be true what you say, though that still doesn't excuse him from what he said and in what tone. Sona still pressed. Sona, are you familiar with how Issei Haidu become Ria's Gremory's pawn? Mireyama asked her voice filled with hate as she was pissed at how the devils operate, though Lucy was one of the devils that Mireyama was okay being friends with as Lucy treated her as her own sister. Unfortunately yes, he was murdered by the Yuma Mano, or should I say Arainer in cold blood, well Ria's knew about it and pick up the scrap. Sona answered making her own peerage shocked at that, clearly no one was expecting that. But the nod from Yureyama, Cadis was the next to say her piece. So you can see why he is like this, and like Lucy said, I will gladly follow Ice before I follow Rias. As he never asked or did something so damaging to us. True we were pissed off at him peeping, but compared to being killed only to be revived and used as a tool is something I will not wish for, not even on my worst enemy. She exclaimed, also in a cold voice getting a nod from Yureyama and Chelsea. Seeing that he had this much impact on the girls, Issei just smiled softly at them before he snapped back in reality as he remembered that there were three other people in the room. We can talk later about this. Why don't we return to the subject at hand? You girls were saying. Issei spoke as he turned to the three other girls in the room who had shock expressions on their faces. Zenobia was first to break the silence as she was not too much surprised at what she heard since she was thought that all devils and fallen were evil. This only solidifies her resolve. Yes as we were saying. We want you devils not to interfere and do not align with those that stole our swords. Zenobia repeated as she wanted to make it go to their heads. Though we know who stole the swords and as a friendly gesture we will tell you. Cassie said softly as she was looking Issei dead in the eyes with a sad smile on her face. Please do and like Issei hide you said we will not side with any party. Sona said seeing that Ria's was out of commission with a dead look on her face as she was again reminded why he was not listening to her. Good, the one that stole our weapons is a cadre class fallen angel known as Kakabiel, and we think he is working with some excommunicated members of the church. Irina told as her happy face turned into a pout. B, did you say Kakabiel? 
Ria's finally said as she recovered after what a Saiyan girl told. Yes, that Kakabiel. He stole three holy swords and is most likely here wanting to begin the second great war. Irina said as she shook her head. The that sound really bad. Kada said seeing the solemn mood in the room. It was Lucy who told what it was in the civil war as it was the closest to great war. Though that it was considered big it was still like a skirmish in comparison to the real thing. Well I fought in civil war and our biggest battle cost over 15 million lives and the smallest battle in great war was 10 times bigger than that. That statement sent chills down everyone's spine as they heard the death toll of even the smallest battle and the biggest one was when the two dragon emperors were sealed. We definitely won't want that. Hell, I will help you any way I can just to increase the chances of the true peace. Issei quickly said still shivering from what his lover said. If my love says he would help then you have also mine in that. I would rather not go through another war if possible. Lucy also told as she was 100% against another one. As she still needed recovery from last one. Seeing that they have help from the devils Cassie and Arena smiled through those smiles vanish when Zenovia refused help. I would rather be dead than ask or receive help from devils. Zenovia sternly spoke as she started to go out only to be stopped by a blade near her neck. Ah uh, damn it that hurt, though no matter, what do you say about a dual exorcist? Those damn swords you and that arena girl have are making my blood boil. Kiba said in venom that surprised everyone as they never thought that they would hear or see the prince of Kuo say does words in that tone. Turning to face him Zenovia just raised an eyebrow. And you are. I'm your superior. Kiba answered with a dark chuckled. Chapter 18. Calm before the storm. As the three exorcists stood with their weapons at the ready and in their combat uniforms which were more like a latex bodysuit, they were faced by Kiba and surprisingly Murayama and Kadis, as they wanted to see how good they can fight against a real opponent. The duo got to use real swords that were provided by Kiba from his gear. Are you all ready? Chelsea said as she took a role of a referee. But the nods from all six of them, she shouted for them to begin as Kiba charged Zenovia, while Lorena and Cassie did the same as Murayama, and Kadis stood their ground with swords at the ready. As soon as Kiba swung his sword down at Zenovia, she simply dodged as she finds it insulting to use the power of one of the strongest swords in the world against those weak ones. But she was soon forced as Kiba sent another slash at her middle, making her parry it with her blade making Kiba rage explode even more. So it's true. I knew I sensed does swords, but now I have even more reason to destroy that damn Excalibur. Kiba shouted as he swings again hard with the second blade that he formed in his other hand, making Zenovia back away. So why do you have so much rage at this sword? Zenovia asked as she wanted to know, since it was no secret that Excalibur was now in seven pieces. That doesn't matter to you. He hissed as he started attacking her again. At the other end of the field, both Cassie and Arena found that the two kendo captains were good opponents, even though that both of them were holding back as not the killer injure them badly. Not bad you two, looks like you know what you are doing. Arena praised as she attacked Cadis again only to be parried by Murayama. Well, we aren't kendo captains for nothing, and we are even training in tag team battles. Cadis said with a smirk as she slashed at Arena, only to be parried by Cassie, who was also impressed. And as you can tell we are also knowledgeable in tag battles, as the three of us are together for four years now, and as you can tell we know each other weakness and protect them. Cassie said in a soft voice as all of them separated from each other. Though before the second round can begin they heard Issei yelling at them. Murayama, Cadis, I think that's enough. You did great, but we aren't here for a real fight. Issei yelled to them as both girls nodded and lowered their swords before bowing and returning to Issei's side, shocking the others. Yeah, I didn't really want to fight anyway. So let's watch Zenovia finish this before we head back. Cassie said as Arena nodded with a smile before she pouts at seeing that Cassie was giving a scanning look at Issei, before getting a small trail of pink on her cheeks. Though that disappeared as they heard an explosion coming from where Zenovia and Kiba were fighting. Everyone turned to where the other battle was happening, and they saw the whole area destroyed and having craters everywhere, as it looked like Zenovia started using her sword's ability which was destruction. Damn it. Kiba growled as he stood up weakly with a few cuts and bruises before making a huge broadsword and charged at Zenovia, who just stood in place with a bored look. You never learn. Zenovia said as she ducked under his swing and lodged a hilt to his guts, putting the end of the battle with Kiba on the ground. That's enough you made your point, we will not disturb your mission. Rhea said as she motioned to Raynor to go and heal Kiba who was out cold. Good, and Sekar Yuite, there is another information that is most critical to you. Cassie said as she was the most compassed of the three. And what information? Issei asked in confusion, having a bad feeling about it. The white one has appeared. Zenovia said in serious tone making Issei go wide eyes. So white emperor decide to show up huh? He questioned in his head. Thank you for that piece of info, you are right that it is crucial to me. Issei politely told them getting a nod from the three as they started walking back their base. 
Bye guys, see you later, Rena shouted as she turned around and waved her hand at them, with Cassie also turning around and giving them a nod. Well, that was eventful. Lucy spoke before she turned around to face Sona and her peerage who were on near Rhea's on her left. Now back to the discussion. She said in a dark tone as she started slowly walking towards the two peerages that were grouped together. Turning to face her, Sona and her peerage formed a defensive line in front of her. Yes, back to the topic. Sona replied in a neutral tone as her eyes showed no emotion, but in her heart, she was afraid a little as she heard stories about Lucy and her destructive nature. You worm step aside, I don't want to kill you. Lucy said in a very dark tone as her eyes started glowing in a dark blue as her powers start rising. Though before destruction can ensure, Mireyama and Cadiz stood in front of Lucy with their backs to the peerages, as if they were defending them. You two step aside, even if I treat you like my sisters, that doesn't mean that I will not hurt you to finish what I started with that bitch and her peerage. Lucy said in a low and cold tone that sent shivers down everyone's spine. Lucy, remember what we talked about. Control yourself or you are going to go back to your dark side again. Elsha's powerful voice was heard as Issei's gear appeared shocking everyone even Issei at this development. The Elsha how did you do that? Issei confusingly asked only to hear her giggle. Oh dear me, Issei my dear I can do it since you got stronger, also remember all of that training that I put you through in your mind. Elsha asked in mischief tone making everyone confused. Yes, but what does that has to do with anything? He questioned only to hear Dua laughing coming from his gear. Greg would you tell them? Or should I? Elsha asked the mighty dragon who grunted in acknowledgement. I would gladly, I can't wait to see their faces though. Drag said his mighty voice turned into a roar of laughter as Issei's gear started glowing brightly red, making everyone shield their eyes from its glow. As the glow started losing his intensity everyone unshielded their eyes, only to be shocked to the very core of what stood near Issei. Right beside Issei Haidu stood none other than Elsha in all her glory. Though she was a little bit transparent, she was still clearly seen by devils and humans alike, as she was standing, floating, near him. She was wearing a blood-red long dress that showed her beautiful curves in her body, with her golden blonde hair going all the way down to her middle back as her eyes were closed and she had a soft smile on her face. Though no one knew who the girl was. It was Issei who first said the words that shocked Lucy, Murayama, Cadiz and Chelsea and to some extent even Sona as she heard stories about her. The Elsha Issei yelled as he took a few steps back in complete shock, making him fall on his ass. But the four girls yelled as they never saw her, but they did talk to her. Ufufa looks like I made quite the appearance. Hum thank you Drake for helping me with this. Elsha said in a sweet voice that was still powerful. You are more than welcome Elsha, though it looks like an explanation is needed. Drake stated getting nods from everyone. Drake what the buck? How is Elsha here? Issei shouted in disbelief at what he witnessed. I will explain partner, you see when you were training and summoning your gear and going inside of it in your mind. Elsha constantly sent pulses of magical energy with a little bit of my aid to help you enter it as it is a daunting task. Though before you say anything, keep in mind that even when we did that it wasn't enough for you to feel it or for your reserves to go up. Think of it as establishing a bridge between us three. Dryag said as he was trying hard not to go back to roaring and laughing as he saw Issei and others face at his information. That's right dear. It was my selfish wish to return to at least a spirit form and Drake gave me his support. Though I can only maintain this form for an hour or two before returning to the gear. For now, I can go out every two three days. Elsha said as she faced Issei before turning to Lucy who was looking at her with a shock expression. So it's true, the past host can return to land of the living. Lucy said compassing herself before moving towards Elsha with her doing the same. I did tell you that it's possible and now you know, though I wanted to wait a bit before doing this, but you forced my hand. Elsha said in a regal voice as she stopped the only meter away from Lucy. Yes you did, though without a body you can do so much, but knowing my love he would find a way to make you real Elsha. Lucy said in a soft voice as she looked at one of the most powerful users of the gear. Drew and when he chooses it, we are going on a date. Hope you don't mind it. Elsha said in a wink making Lucy laugh as she was enjoying this conversation. The girls in front of her looked similar to her. Powerful, honest and mischief. Sure, I don't mind. I told the other three the same. Lucy answered with a wink shocking the others. W wait you know each other? Issei asked as he looked between two beauties. Yes love, we had a chance to talk when you were sleeping, and I must say I like your look Elsha, you really look like a princess. Lucy answered him before commenting Elsha. why thank you, though it looks like me appearing did the trick, you are now calmer. Elsha softly spoke as she saw the fury that was in Lucy's eyes have disappeared. That may be true, but I won't forget it. Lucy said before turning to face Sona and her peerage. Count yourselves lucky, but if we ever meet in raiding game. I will destroy you like I did to those foolish enough to face my wrath. 
As Sona was about to answer to that threat, Kiba who was on the ground, stood up on his shaky legs and started walking away to the shock of Ria's and her team. Udo, where do you think you are going? Ria's demanded as Kiba stopped in his tracks and answered her not turning to face her. I'm going to take a walk. Don't follow me or try to return me back. I will have my vengeance. Kiba said loudly enough for everyone to hear as he started walking again, ignoring Ria's demands for him to return and stop this. Looks like what my love said it's true. You are horrible king. Lucy said as she started walking away with Murayama, Cadis and Chelsea following her, while Lise and Elsha stood in place looking at Kiba's form that was slowly walking away, though they were shocked when they heard him mumble, which Lise picked up easily, since he was part dragon devil making him have enhanced hearing. I'll take my vengeance on those horror blades that killed me and my comrades. Even if I die in the process. Mumbled in fury as he kept walking away from Ria's and the group. Ice, darling, let's get home. Lucy and the girls will be waiting for you. I will return to the gear for now. Elsha said as she started to disappear back into the gear, though before completely fading, she grabbed Issei's head and kissed him on the cheek, making him go dark red from the kiss. Why yeah? Issei mumbled as he robotically started moving towards his house. Leaving disorganized and shocked peerages behind him. As Issei entered his house, he wasn't that surprised to see all the girls in the living room chatting with his parents and having a few laughs. Though when they heard the door opening and Issei entering the mood changed from joyful to serious, as they excused themselves and stood up and went to Issei's and Lucy's room. Seeing this Issei just sigh before following them two upstairs and into his room leaving his parents to go about their day as usual. As everyone took their spots in his room that was rid free of all porn he had, Issei just closed the door and leaned on the wall looking at everyone present. So what's with the overly serious mood? Issei asked as he sighs as no one said anything. Okay, you are really going on my nerves. Spill it out now Issei said as even after a few minutes no one spoke. Though his higher voice broke them as they all flinched a little and compassed themselves before looking at him. Love, do you know who Kakabiel is? Lucy asked him as she stood from her spot on the bed and walked towards him. Nope, I can only think that he is cadre class, correct? Issei answered honestly getting a solemn nod from his lover. That's right, though there also lies one of the few problems. Lucy answered getting him to tilt his head to the side a little making her giggle a little. What kind of problems? He questioned as Lucy shook her head a little. The problem of how to stop him. Even in your balance breaker and my power we still need more to stop him. Murayama and Cadis may start to learning from me magic, and Chelsea is good in stealth and can possibly get a hit or two on him, but I highly doubt our chances here. And that is with the red-haired bitch and Sona's peerages helping. We are simply outpowered and of course, he is going to bring a few exorcists and maybe fall into a system. Lucy said making his eyes wide at her words seeing her point. What? Mura and Kat started to learn magic. Issei asked in shock getting a nod from Kendo Duo as both girls put their right hand up and a small ball of flame and ice formed in their hand respectively. Yes they did, they asked if they can do magic and I showed them and started training them in it. Murayama is good with fire, well Kadis is good with ice, so they can at least defend themselves a little bit. But that isn't the point now love. Lucy answered him making him blink before he nodded. Right, though did you inform Grafia about Kakabiel and all that stuff? Issei asked again getting a nod from the heiress. Yes, sister told me that when he shows up to inform her and to delay him as much as possible before she or Serzich's can muster enough forces to come and stop him. Lucy answered though there was something that didn't go well with Issei. Something told him that there was more to it than that, but he kept it in as not to make Lucy doubt her sister. Alright, though that leaves us with a few options then. Issei said with a smile making everyone blink at him. And those are Issei. Cadis asked as she didn't see much options. Yay, do tell darling I love to hear your plan. Chelsea said as she was also in the same pot with Caddis. It's simple. Though also very dangerous and before you shout and or hit me listen carefully, alright. Issei asked softly looking at the girls who looked at each other before nodding. Firstly, Chelsea what is your gear and how does it work? I need to know before I tell a plan. Issei asked. My gear is gear foundation. It's a more like a camouflage gear that lets me be almost invisible and untraceable to those around me, though if someone is way stronger than me they can sense me. Though if I can increase my strength or focus really hard I can hide from them, but it's very hard as I'm left a sitting duck with no power to do anything. Oh one last thing, I can change shape and have the abilities of that form. Though before you say about me copying your balance breaker I can't do it. Chelsea said as Issei just nodded at her words. That is deadly if used in the right moment and place. Now with that info, I have a good plan. Issei said as the girls just stare at him giving him the signal to continue. The plan is following. Chelsea, I want you to follow Kiba and see his movements and what he is up to, and when you can inform me or Lucy. Issei said getting the nod from the English girl, before turning to the Kendo girls. 
while Chelsea is busy with Kiba, I want you two to train as much as possible with Lucy and magic, and if possible, I will try to have Elsha help as well since from what I experienced, her magic is deadly. Not to mention that she uses a combination of Slavic and Norse. Issei explained as he got a nod from the mentioned girls. As for me, I will go to see and talk to Irina, Zenobia and Cassie to see if there is a possibility of working together since that would increase our chances of survival and give maybe enough firepower to stop that war-hungry idiot. Issei told them as Lucy just smiled at his plan. He really thought about it and it sounded like it had a really good chance of succeeding. Fine love we will do as you told. Though if you get into trouble just increase your power and we will come to help, alright. Lucy softly said as she lightly kissed him on the lips as a good luck charm. Thanks. Now Chelsea, go you have a lot to do. Lucy trained them as best as you can, though try not to kill them please. Issei told them as they all stood up and leaving the house before separating as everyone went on their way. But Chelsea going to find Kiba, Issei for the church trio and Lucy calling her sister informing her about two guests that were coming and that she would need her help, which Grafia agreed and sent her coordinates, where she would go for training and where she would meet her. As everyone was on their way. Chelsea was looking for the blonde knight of the group, as it was clear to everyone that he was now a ticking time bomb, waiting to explode and do something that could possibly start a war. As she was walking for a few hours trying to find him it started to get dark, and to add more to her tiredness and frustration, it started raining with thunder strikes roaring in the background and flashes. Great, it's raining now and it's going to ruin my hair. Oh, when I finish this I'm going to make darling know not to send me out when there is a thunderstorm. Chelsea mumbled as she was sure to make a say pay for this. Though her anger died down when she saw Kiba locking blades with a man that was wearing a white robe and was emitting a lot of holy energy. Deciding to get a closer look, Chelsea cloaked herself and made her way closer to the battlefield. As she was getting closer she saw that there were a lot of dead people around them, making her gasp as she was praying that Kiba didn't do it. Though her prey was hurt as she listens what the white-haired boy said. While she was hiding in the nearby forest. Oh, 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 what made you have so much anger blondie? The white hair said making Kiba even angrier. Shut up Freed you are making me sick. Kiba answered as he used his sacred gear to try and pierce Freed like a kebab. Though to his irritation Freed just swiped his sword from side to side destroying Kiba's attempt, making him laugh. That was nice, but I think it's time to end this. I loved fighting you stinky vermin. Freed said as he charged Kiba only to be blocked by two swords holding his in a deadlock. You, what are you doing here? Kiba shouted at the green hair girl. I'm here to save you knight, Freed has Excalibur rapidly, so you will have even harder time. And Issei sent us, so don't think anything. If it was our way you would be dead. Cassie said as she pushed Freed back a little giving her more space to maneuver and show of her speed that was way beyond even the speed that Knight Peacer Excalibur could muster. Us? Kiba confusingly asked only to see three more people showing up from the woods. Yes Knight of Gremory, us. Since the Red Dragon Emperor offered his assistance we took it upon ourselves to try and find you so you don't go astray. Though now that I see who you are fighting I'm more inclined to help. Zenobia said as she drew her sword following her lead, Irina also draw hers as both charged at Freed, while Chelsea sneaked behind Kiba and with a quick chop to the neck, knock him out, not giving him time to escape or attack anyone. Finally got you, now I can go to Darling and have him question you. Chelsea said to herself as she watched the exorcists fight the stray priest and Cassie, giving him the most damage with her speed. Though just when Cassie decided to end his pathetic life, someone new showed up stopping her in her track. As all of them shoot their heads up to see a short man with a mustache wearing a priest uniform. Freed you should retreat now. You can't beat them, especially Cassie Lockettheart, her natural ability gives her more speed than Excalibur can. And you manage to get two more Excalibur users to fight you. Retreat now Freed. It's almost time for the war to start. The man said as Freed nodded. Alright Father Valper. Bye bye girls, love to fight you, but it's time for good stuff. Hahaha <laughs> Freed said as he was about through the bomb but was stopped with a rope that glowed black with a little purple to it, making everyone look from where it came from, only to see Sona and Rias with her peerage and Issei appearing from the magic circle with a blonde hair boy having the rope come out of is from what they could tell was a dragon type sacred gear. Nice one Saji. The white haired girl said. Saji looked at her and saw she was in a Kuo school uniform, however the compliment made the boy blush a little. Thank you Momo. He said with a soft smile making her blush though Issei stepped forward towards the girls and a knocked out Kiba with Freed trying and failing to cut the rope. But job girls. You too Chelsea. Though did you really need to knock him out? Issei said as Chelsea only whistled innocently while turning around. What did you do to you Udo? Rias demanded to know as she walked forward with Sona and their peerages following, only to stop a few meters in front of Issei who was glaring at her. Rias, I'm already mad at you, don't make me put you in your place. Besides if it wasn't for Chelsea and the church trio Kiba might have been dead by now. 
Issei told her coldly as he turned around walking slowly forward towards the out cold Kiba and Chelsea, who was looking at him with her head a little title to the side, as he gave her a piece of paper. Use it and go to my place with Kiba. I will be back shortly. Okay, darling. Issei whispered into her ear, his hot breath making her shiver a little. Though she turned bright red as he kissed her cheek and just nodded to her to go. Fine darling, but we have a lot to discuss, Chelsea whispered back as she also kissed him on the cheek, before stepping closer to Kiba and flaring her power, making the paper glow. Nice seeing you all, though darling says I must go, so bye all of you, talk to you all later. Chelsea said as she with Kiba teleported away. They say what is the meaning of this? Ria's yelled furiously as she just seen her piece getting kidnapped and the other not at all paying attention to her. Hassi, Zenovia, Irina, you all right girls? Issei asked ignoring the even more fuming Ria's. Yeah, though what you said was true, Freed has the stolen three blades. Cassie said as she walks towards him. Freed, use your holy power to cut yourself free now and let's get out of here, we can't win in this fight. Kakabiel is waiting for us. Valpra yelled as Freed quickly did what was told and freed himself. I devils, we will meet again. Was all that Freed said before throwing his bomb that was a flash grenade, make everyone blind for a few seconds till they could see again. When their sight returned, they all saw that the two stray priests were gone. Sighing in relief Issei turned to the other devils who were glaring at him. Yes. Issei asked as he raised his eyebrow at seeing Kaneko, Akeno, Rainer, and members of the student council step forward with their magic and weapons at the ready. You know that what you did can be labeled as a traitorous behavior and action. Sona said in a cold voice as she stepped just in front of her peerage with Rias doing the same. And why would that be the case? Hmm? Issei asked as he about to flare his power to call for Lucy and Grafia. Negotiation with the enemy. Is it enough or you want more? Sona answered as her peerage started to power up. Also disobeying direct orders from your master and threatening her. Rias said as she along with her group also powered up. Seeing that the fight may be near, Issei turned to exorcists. You girls go to my place I will be back shortly. There is plenty of food and you can wash up. Feel at home. Irina you up for showing them the way. Issei told them getting a nod from the trio. Sure Ice, thought are you sure you want to stay here alone? Irina asked as she more than willing to fight alongside him. It will be alright Irina, he is way stronger than the red-haired. Cassie said as the other two nodded and left. Leaving Issei to smile a little before turning around and becoming serious. Surrender now Issei hi do or we will be forced to restrain you. Sona said, though Issei just laughs as he flared his power. Nah I think someone is more than happy to talk to you now even more. He said with a chuckle as two magic circles appeared and from them, four girls appeared striking fear into the group as two silver-haired girls walk forward while a brown and pink stayed in their place. Oh love, I must say you just gave me a good show. I was getting a little bit bored in the underworld from training without you being there to watch your help in it. Lucy said as she hugged Issei who smiled at her. Now what happened for to have to flare out your power? Grafia asked as Issei just shrugged and pointed at the powered up two high class devils and their peerages. That, and I think they need to know that even if they are the sibling of a mag that doesn't excuse them. Issei said as Lucy let go of him. I'm taking Leviathan's sister, you can have fun with Rhea's my love. Lucy said as her eyes started to glow. Works for me. Grafia please don't intervene. Issei said as Grafia just nodded and backed off to the kendo girls who were looking at the duo about to fight. Well Sona and Rhea's looked in shock that Grafia is doing what Issei said. What? You are obeying what he is saying Grafia. When brother hear of this he is Rhea started to rant, but was stooped when Issei got fed up and yelled something that made all of them shiver in fear. Balance breaker Welsh dragon scale male. Issei yelled. Welsh dragon balance breaker drag roared. As those words were said Issei's booster gear appeared and started to glow in the red light before the light engulf him blinding all of them for a moment. Though when they could see they saw him standing with his balance breaker armor on him. Now shall we dance? Issei asked as Lucy just giggled. I never thought you would ask Tun. She answered as they both charged at the group surprising them. Let me know in the comments below if you guys want the next part. Also check out my other video that has been shown and left. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video please like and share this video. And have a fantastic day bye.